Hi there guys, welcome to Lunas World and quite a few of you have been requesting for me to uh, show you graphic settings and talk about performance and frame rates and all that kind of stuff to get the most out of um, your sim or maybe to show you what it looks like um, you know with different uh, slide different settings on the sliders here and maybe explain a bit about what these sliders do um, you know I'm not an expert on this stuff but I know what I'm doing when it comes to uh, you know setting these and things so basically I've got everything dialed right the way down all the sliders over to the left um, which let's just go into the sim makes it look uh, you know a little bit uh, basic let's just hop outside okay so this is basically x-plane 11 dialed down as far as it will go um, I do have Skymax Pro installed but again I have dialed everything down in there as much as it all more or less um, turned off God rays uh, enabled not enabled uh, cloud reflections solid stratus form so all of that's dialed down as much as possible um, and this is what you get and the trade-off for the visuals is that you get you know 60 to 70 odd frames a second which is incredibly nice and smooth so we'll just unpause this and we'll take off It's given me an excellent landing. But anyway, there we go. So let's just um, level off. All right, I'm going to pause. So basically, that is the lowest settings. Um, it looks, by my standards, pretty, pretty terrible. Um, but it's flyable. You know, you've got very hardly any ground textures. It's just green for grass. Um, Actually, the, the mountains don't look too bad, to be honest. I mean, they look a bit blurry when you get close up to them. But if you've got a really low-end laptop or a low-end uh, PC with a, you know, a, a poor excuse of a graphics card, um, not to be mean, then it's possible, you know, as long as you meet the minimum requirements, that you're going to be able to run it um, and get fairly decent frames. But visually, it's not going to look great. Now, there's a juggling act here between getting good frames and good visuals. And for me, the balance is always uh, towards getting good frame rates. I want a smooth and realistic experience within uh, my flight simulators. That's always been the case. And I'm very willing to trade um, some of the eye candy or the visuals uh, in order to achieve that. So what you have to do is really set these each this is going to be different for each person and each system and you've got to really be um, not too concerned with frame rates but concerned with the smoothness you know and so obviously as you slide these up to the right the frame rates are going to drop and also the amount of memory that you need um, in order to for your graphics card to handle things is going to increase these three sliders here are GPU orientated so your graphics card will control the majority of stuff there and these two are mostly CPU generated um, so what we're going to do is crank things up to low and basically show you what that looks like so I think um, it's given me a warning here that I've got to restart explain to apply the changes so I will do that and I'll bring you back uh, once it's done Hi guys, so back after a quick re restart, and this is what it looks like on low settings. So you can see we've got much more detail um, on the mountains. We've got some trees actually extending up onto the mountains. Uh, we're at Innsbruck, by the way, if you were wondering. Um, and yeah, just generally looking a lot nicer. Um, we've got shadows. We've got a little bit, if you zoom in on here, you can see the jagged lines and this weird sort of effect is sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, there is a name for it. Um, but still getting good frames, 50, I've dropped below 60 now, so we're on about 50, 45 to 50 frames. So um, what we'll do is unpause it and we'll just uh, take off. And you can 
see how it performs. So I'm just going to pause it there and we'll just pop outside again. So as you can see, um, the textures of the airport are much more detailed. Um, still kind of blocky, still kind of, you know, basic, but a lot better than before. Um, and the same goes for the runway textures. The ground textures are still a bit dodgy, maybe a little bit more detail, but not much. Um, you know, this is flyable. This is kind of reminds me of uh, I don't know Microsoft Flight Sim 2004, maybe even 98. You know, so that kind of level. But it's flyable, good frame rates. Um, if you've got a low-end system, really low-end system, then you know this is what you can expect. Um, and your frame rates will differ, of course. So let's start notching things up a little bit faster. So we'll go to medium settings now. And again, because I'm changing the anti-aliasing, it's going to ask me. In fact, we're going to go, we're going to go up to the maximum amount of anti-aliasing because when we switch this to HDR, this whole thing changes. We'll get into that in a second. So we'll also ramp up our um, world number of world objects and, ref and reflection detail to medium so I'll be back after a quick restart and then we'll see where we are okay guys here we are back with our medium settings and um, I think this is pretty flyable let's just uh, take off and uh, have a look at the scenery from up there already you can notice that the um, the runway texture is a lot better So I'm just going to pause it. We'll go to an outside view. Let's have a look at the ground texture. Okay, so definitely improved, a lot smoother. Um, starting to get a little bit of texturing through here. Still a way to go, but look at the shadows on the dark side of this mountain. Um, really nice. That is starting to look really good, as are the buildings, the autogen. Um, yeah, starting to look really nice now. Um, I'd be quite happy with that. Let's just have another quick look at the settings. So that's all on medium. Now what happens, as I said before, is when we click this onto HDR, we get a whole new set of anti-aliasing. I'm not going to go through all of them, um, mostly because I don't know what they mean, but you can play around with the slider. Let me just do it. So let's just go to that. And then, of course, you've, you can um, adjust this to for none. All the way up to eight times SSAA and FXAA. I have no idea what that stands for. I can't remember anyway. Um, and then we've got uh, HDR and SSAO, which is the maximum uh, setting there for visual effects. So um, yeah, so the medium settings are pretty good. And like I said, if I'm flying in a busy area. I will quite often have things on medium uh, just to get the performance, so uh, there's no shame in it. Pointless chasing uh, frame rates if it doesn't look realistic to you, and the other way around, it's pointless setting it really high to make it look ultra realistic if you can't get the frame rates that you need to fly uh, with uh, a level of realism. So anyway, let's move on to the next setting and um, we're gonna go for pretty much maxed out now. And uh, I'll load this and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, back soon. Okay, so welcome back. So this is pretty much, if we go to the graphic settings here, you'll see that we're pretty much maxed out with exception of cloud, uh, we're sorry, cloud, with without shadow on scenery. We'll come back to that. Let's just um, unpause it and have a look around. It's 
So we've got really nice shadows inside the cabin and the cockpit. And um, let's just pause that and we'll have a go outside and we'll look at the ground textures looking back at the airfield. So again, now you can see lots of detail, um, even more so than before. This is a lot sharper if you look at this uh, sort of photo reel scenery here um, and looking much much better just a lot of detail um, and yeah to me though and look at the autogen loads and loads of buildings absolutely drenched in buildings and um, i was going to mention two things now the first thing is um, you can add in shadows uh, for the scenery and what that does is that every single one of these buildings I think or at least most of them will generate a shadow um, on the floor now of course that is basically for every building is doubling up the amount of not quite doubling because it's not the same level of detail but it's adding a lot more resources to each building now if you've got the auto gen on high you imagine how many shadows it's going to input so um, so I'm not gonna you can play around with it I'm not really gonna show you uh, too much I'm not gonna turn it on just because it takes ages but you can expect a 10 to 15 frames well that's maybe a little bit over the top let's say 8 8 to 15 uh, frames dropped by checking this depending on where you are if you're in an area where you've got um, minimal buildings then of course this isn't going to have a huge impact but an area like this where you're in a town or or in a city it's even you know more you need to be really careful with that because that can mean the difference between a lovely smooth experience versus a incredibly jerky and not that pleasant experience so be 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 warned um, what else is there to say? Let's just have another look. We'll just go back in. Now, I don't know about you, but this is all good and well. The textures look great. Um, everything looks sharp and lovely and the lighting is okay, except that it feels a bit flat. Um, and I think that is because of what Skymax Pro is doing. Now, Skymax Pro is basically just putting this thick layer of cloud, a little bit of haze. That's probably, that, that is explained. Um, and it's putting some uh, rain um, quite nicely into the scene. So this is how important it is, I think, to have uh, an environmental plugin, um, something like X Enviro or Skymax Pro. Um, I've had a request to do a video on X Enviro. I haven't actually got that yet, but I'm thinking about purchasing it. It's quite a big purchase, but um, I'd like to do a, a comparison and. Uh, check out what that has to offer over Skymax Pro. So let's have a look in clouds. Let's start to um, ramp this up. So we'll go to crisp. We'll put our God rays on. We'll go to high. Uh, we'll put our reflections on. We'll go to dense particles here. We'll turn lens flare on. This is to me what brings, you know, the already excellent um, sort of auto gen scenery of X-Plane alive. Now let's just have a look. Let's just click apply. Um, we were, bearing in mind, we we're on about 20 to 25 frames, and it hasn't really dropped much at all. And I don't know if you can see, but just the lighting, the way, so for example, here you've got an area of light here that is visible. Um, let's unpause it actually. Now to me, rather than just being a kind of flat sort of lighting, this has changed. This has got something added to it. I don't know, there's more lighting up here in the mountains. It's, you get the depiction of um, cloud shadows. Um, so that to me is, is one of the things that Skymax Pro does. And the frames are not affected, certainly in my case, not too badly. Um, does altering the time of day change the frame rates that we get let's have a look so here we go not really a 
maybe, maybe one or two frames, but marginal stuff, not really uh, that noticeable. But now you can see, you know, you've got the sun reflecting on the faces of these buildings. You've got, you know, this would be a good time to have the shadows enabled. Um, but it just brings it to life. It just gives it a sort of much more le less, a less flat appearance and uh, more uh, more life to it. Anyway, guys, um, I hope that's been helpful in some way. The, basically, the moral of the story is you've got to, first of all, decide what is most important. Is it the visuals or is it the smooth experience? And then dial things up and down to juggle that and not just dial it and set it and leave it, but think about where you're flying what the scenario is you know what add-ons you've got are you using a, a complex plane or a default plane are you default scenery or complex scenery all that stuff comes into play and I really think you should um, every time you fire X plane 11 up you should kind of think about that can I can I get a smoother experience if that is the case or can I get more out of the scenery by tweaking and playing around with these things a little bit more but um, th there's a lot you can do and I think um, again this is at the time of the recording this is the beta 6 update so uh, we're not even an optimized full up uh, full uh, release yet so I expect um, uh, this to be even better in terms of uh, performance by the time it comes out hopefully in February so I hope you find that useful guys if you do please uh, like and share and subscribe and um, uh, let me know in the comments your thoughts if I've missed something out if you don't agree more than happy to hear from you and uh, like I said I hope you found this useful and I'll see you very soon take care